everyone, and welcome to episode 138 of Let's Play. And today we are here with Patty and Sharon. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Excited to be back on the podcast. Um, and of course, as always, excited to talk about this episode. I've gotten really lucky at which episodes that I get to talk on. So I'm ready. Let's do this. Yeah, and I'm back on the podcast as well. I'm Shireen, and it's my, I think, third time. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Second time on Let's Play. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we started off with a little recap. Uh, we're just going to breeze through this where Vicky was, um, you know, having this like one on one session with Marshall. And when she held his hand, she seemed to get like a real glimpse into his struggles and his personality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as soon as we saw that, like I knew it was a lead up to. We're going to have more of that kind of content later on. In right. The episode. Right. Um, and I'm not going to go too deep with this, but I've always kind of wondered um, what Mongi's purpose is with this. Like, I know that it's, it's to show us kind of the other side and see how they experience other people's emotions. But I'm like, is this empath or like we inserting a little bit of magic here? Like, is she, is she like witchy and she can... <laughs> Like, is she having visions or is it just feelings and vibes? Like, so let's discuss this when we get to the last part because I, okay. okay. I have questions on that also. So, okay. Yeah, I was wondering the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll save that because, yeah, we have, we have what to say. So, we open up in Sam's apartment. Sam is standing in front of the mirror looking displeased. And weirdly enough, she has like a sheet over the mirror. Which she really doesn't like want to look at herself. That's so sad. Like, I know. Um, I don't really have full length mirrors in my house. Like when I need to look at myself, I like jump onto the bathtub and I try to like, mm -hmm. you know, I sometimes even jump up and down so I can see more of myself. <laughs> but yeah, but like that's sad that you don't like yourself so much that you don't even want to see yourself and you have to block the mirror yeah. that you already have. Yeah, yeah. And like this scene, I know we're going to get a little more into it, but I, I really feel like Sam is retreating back into her, um, her shy, unsure self after that whole sexual encounter with Charles, which makes me kind of worried. I'm like, I, I get it. She's, she's, this is all new to her. And so it's, it's going to be hard for her to accept and hard for her to look at herself essentially and see herself as a, a human that has sexual feelings. Um, but I'm I'm a little worried that she's retreating this far back into her her insecurities. I don't know. What do you ladies think? Well, the thing that threw me off for the vibes I've been getting for the recent mm -hmm. episodes, like here when she's insecure, Charles plays into it, you know, because mm -hmm. she doesn't feel comfortable just throwing on a turtleneck that's gonna hide the bite mark because she's worried of what he's going to think and that he'll be upset yeah. that she didn't wear the clothes that he wants her to wear. And like, since we came back, I don't know if I just kind of like forgot about their dynamic or whatever, but since we came back, I've been like, not so much on the ship anymore. I feel like I'm like dangling off the side, like trying to hold on and like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know. Some things just feel a little bit iffy. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Like I've, I have firmly been on that quote ship for quite some time. And the more that I kind of look back and I, I know here's the thing, like, I don't think that Charles has any ill will or ill intentions with, you know, his feelings for Sam. I, I don't think he wants to hurt her. And we've kind of seen that where he went through that whole spiel of like trying to cool off in the pool like, cause he can't stop thinking about her. Um, so I'm glad that we have those little snippets into his mind that he really wants to, he wants to do this right. I, I really do believe that, but he's got a lot of hangups and there's a lot of control factors here. And I think you hit the nail on the head because you know what, what she says next, she's like, this is so difficult. I need to wear something to hide this bite mark. But most of my turtlenecks are oversized and frumpy. And she says, Charles wouldn't think it looks professional. And that was like, that was super alarming to me. Yeah. I'm like, eh, that doesn't feel good. <laughs> I'm like, why? Like, I, I know she cares what other people think, but, you know, this kind of takes it to another level because they've yeah. crossed that barrier into sexual activity. Yeah, which I'm back and forth. So before I um, 
before I did my reread of Let's Play for the mm -hmm. season, uh, for the new season, my yeah. impression of Charles was a very, very messed up guy who yeah. is very domineering and pushes people. Mm -hmm. And I thought the way that he treated Sam was very manipulative. And I had a, I liked him because I like people with those kinds of issues, maybe, but I like people with a certain number of issues <laughs> and I like complicated people, but I was like, okay, this guy has issues. And then when I reread it, I saw that he was doing it to help her. And I was like, okay, this is, yeah, mm -hmm. I still had that, like, okay, this is a little bit of like the non-consensual in a way, because he was like, you know, doing it and hiding it from yeah. her. So I was like, but, but I saw that he was doing it for her. And then in this season, I feel like he's been, we've been shown that he's been super respectful to her. And he's like, you know, mm -hmm. you take the lead. Um, I want you to feel good. Right. And I was like, okay, you know, Charles, you're redeeming yourself. But I do think that because of their personalities, they can have potential to lead into unhealthy things. And I talked about this oh, yeah. before with couples. They have, mm -hmm. they have traits that click together and those same traits click together in a healthy way and an unhealthy way. Mm -hmm. And I talked right. about like my husband and I dynamic. My husband wanted someone to do everything for him. I am the kind of person who likes to do everything and have no one tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And that was a good click and a bad click because <laughs> it was, you know, it addressed both of our needs, but we both have to work on that like it, it's, also, it's also our greatest failing where I had to be in control and he didn't mm -hmm. do enough so couples I can see them clicking together mm -hmm. and it would work for them because Sam is kind of shy and she has always been told what to do by all the domineering people around her right so it's understandable that she would click with someone like him but can't unless they learn to you know balance it, it out down, they will end up in an unhealthy dynamic so right right and I yeah. think we're kind of veering in that direction a little bit yeah. No, I, I think that given what's been happening now, we're going to have Charles escape to England and Marshall's going to come into play, but what's mm -hmm. going to happen after that? Like, I don't know. <laughs> so I don't yeah. know. Like, gonna be I don't love the idea of Marshall, like, you know, like, oh, Sam and Charles don't work out. So now she's on to man number three. Like at this <laughs> point, I almost want Sam to just be single, <laughs> like, you know, be kind of free and see the world or something like that, you know? Because I yeah. think Marshall is such a great friend, but I don't feel it either. I don't know. I'm like, I'm I'm just floating in the sea and all of the ships are like yeah. around me. <laughs> like, I don't know which one to hang on to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, one of the things I will say that I, and I've talked with some friends about this, that I appreciate about Let's Play that I don't see a lot in other comics is that it, it really gives sam the ability to kind of explore her sexuality without being locked down to any one person you know so often with these romance comics there's like the one person that you are destined to be with and the entire comic is the process of you two getting together and and like don't get me wrong those have their place and they definitely satisfy a need out there in the fiction community but that's not real life real life is people you know like and I'm not saying that for everybody. Okay. I just want to be clear about that. Like everybody has their kind of ways of doing things, but like how many people do you know that have like been with one person and one person only and never dated around it's, it's in our Dad. culture. It's like <laughs> few and far between. Like, yeah. and, and like I said, there's, there's nothing wrong with, you know, being that you're my one person for forever. That's beautiful. That's gorgeous. And I want some like that that's everywhere right in in movies in in comics i i need something i want to see something where somebody makes the decision on their own and they just kind of play the field and and i think we have the potential to have that with this comic sorry i'll step off my soapbox but <laughs> <laughs> i just i need to see that i i I, I want her to get different experiences before she decides what she wants yeah. to do. And I want her to have some single time. I think that's great. Yeah. No, but don't apologize for like, you know, talking and everything. Because I mean, for me, that's why I started falling in love with this podcast because mm -hmm. I can read, you know, I can just read the webtoon and True. come to my own conclusions. But it's so nice to have these kind of ventures and to mm -hmm. hear people's like, opinions and departures from the story and right. so I really like it <laughs> right oh goodness 
I think also I like that it's you know realistic because every relationship will have its complexities and mm-hmm. every relationship will have his downsides like there's no one person that you're going to end up with who's going to be perfect for you and it's totally right you no know? and people go through like for sure my husband and I we went through areas like years of toxicity as well like we mm-hmm. went through years we were each using our worst sides of ourselves and you know we adjust we go back and forth we we grow right. better you know like mm-hmm. I think it's normal to have you know a relationship where you have to work on things and you grow and grow so yeah I think it's realistic it's not like oh you find someone and then it's love and bliss forever <laughs> oh man but we know we've seen that in comics where it's like you get a little bit of conflict getting up to that point but then the couple gets together and it just ends and I'm like well what the fuck (laughs) that's not where real life ends Mm -hmm. yep I have I have lots to say on that and I've um yeah sorry (laughs) no no, no. it's it's one of my biggest things because in terms of storytelling right Mm -hmm. people like to end with a a good resolution like the story has to have right And I think it's normal and reasonable, but Mm -hmm. that's why I like in certain, there's certain series that I've read where it goes through, like after they meet and it goes through Mm -hmm. like their married life or their couple of life, whatever it is. And I love that because, you know, and then every book kind of has its own, you know, you know, beginning and problem climax, whatever a good story Mm -hmm. needs to have, but it proceeds after the relationship. And I just, right. Right. I mean, this is also why fan fiction happened, like, right. Like not even just when I'm popular, but like fan fiction in general, I remember it with Harry Potter back in my young days. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, like, even before we had the, like, canon couples or whatever, it's just mm-hmm. like, but what's going to happen? And what would, like, Harry's life be like after? And I was always like, okay, everything, like, everything people are writing is unrealistic. This guy mm-hmm. has so much trauma. <laughs> it would not be okay. He right, be right. Okay. Unless you can, like, go to magic therapy and they're just like, <laughs> bye, <Magic person."> therapy. <laughs> like, Oh, no. <laughs> oh god magic school Take therapy. A potion, your problems will be solved <laughs> yeah. yeah oh god i wish it worked that way ladies my job would be so much easier <laughs> but it well is you not. would be almost out of a job i suppose I but it wouldn't be i mean it would be a bad thing for you but i guess from the world <laughs> I, I would have to become a potions master that would be my life <laughs> i mean that'd be pretty cool though <laughs> i'll take it i'll take it la potion dorada <laughs> yes 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 oh my god (laughs) oh sharon you kill me (laughs) i love that we are like two panels (laughs) well it was relevant it was relevant yeah (laughs) all right so we have knock knock and she's like oh she jumped he's already here no time to change now and yeah she's very anxious yeah which Mm -hmm. you know hmm. Okay, so he opens the door and he's like, "Good morning, Samira." She blushes. She got. She kind of like grabbed Bowser to put in front of her as a shield. I saw that. Right? Yes, yeah. I put that in my notes. I was like, "Look at the barrier she's creating between the two of them," and like Bowser, this entire time, he's like the only one who's like super happy and like, "Yay, <laughs> my favorite person is here." Oh God, I I think it also might be a little mini reminder that while we're going through a tough time with Charles and Sam, that, you know, for for me, like dogs can feel vibes too. And I think Mm. he sees the good in Charles. So uh, I'm I'm trying to hang on to that part. (laughs) I mean, are you also sad that the helmet hair is back? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) not a fan. I like messy Charles. (laughs) I know, right? It's, he looks so much better with the with the nice, you know, whatever yeah. wildish wild. It's not really yeah. wild, but yeah, <laughs> he's he's, he's back to contained, controlled Charles. Um, yeah, I mean, and then they're going to work, so he, he kind of has to have that yeah. back on. Um, yeah, which to me is like the whole work dynamic is. I don't know when we'll get to discussing it, but I'm. I don't know how I, I don't know how that would be managed. Like, oh God, no. <laughs> like well and and here's the funny thing and I don't know what it is but like in my line of work for some reason there are at least the agency that I worked for before there were at least like two or three like couples that ended up like they met at the agency they decided to get married and I'm like I don't know how the hell y'all do that because I would not want to work with my spouse I love him dearly but I know (laughs) I work with my boyfriend. We oh, do you? Her. Okay, yeah. so how do you manage that? I'm curious. Well, so we met, we were both training at the uh-huh. very beginning. So we went through like the whole process together. Yeah. Um, 
and I'm just established which means like I'm done with my training Mm -hmm. he's still in training um so that already adds an interesting dynamic (laughs) oh but um I mean I quite like it because Mm -hmm. I work a very specific job that is insanely hard to explain to people who don't know it ah and so for us like we work in different well I don't know if you know Patty but I'm a um air traffic controller (laughs) ah yeah, that's oh, extremely no? <laughs> complex. <laughs> we're just yep, watching the movie. Wait, 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 wait. Sure. you would appreciate this. My husband and I were just watching the latest Michael Hausman movie where he's an air traffic, traffic controller. And Michael Hausman is a Dutch actor. So there we go. Oh. <laughs> I should check out that movie. I've never heard of it. It's, you know, it's like 0022 or something. That's what it's called. Wait, maybe I have heard of it. I'll, I'll ask Ian later. I, I remember something, a movie title with numbers that had to do with work. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah. So basically we work in sectors, which means like different airspace. Like he does Dutch airspace, I do German airspace. So it's not like we work literally side by side, uh-huh. but often, you know, we'll have each other on the phone. It'll be like, hey, can you take this plane like this and this? And he's like, sure. Or, you know, so sometimes it's a bit mm-hmm. awkward because he'll call or whatever. I'm like, that's weird okay yeah sure whatever do it you know and then we go home and it's like yeah why did you do this weird thing it's like no it's not weird it's because of blah 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 and you're like "Mm, okay um but I think it's great because Mm -hmm. well first of all I'm a shift worker and I think being with a partner that doesn't work shifts would be like quite difficult Mm -hmm. um and then also just I love that I can tell him about what happened at work and he would understand yeah I can see that yeah, but I don't know how it is with like, obviously, you know, if you're working like an office job, although, I mean, for mm-hmm. her with, with gaming and things like that, I think it could be also interesting if he kind of would know a little bit, but I don't think he knows lots of like the technicalities about it at all. Right, right. Um, question, and then is, plus, I mean, she works dying, as an assistant. Right, but... <laughs> yeah, like they're working literally side by side. And so that I could not, yeah that I could not imagine that's why we particularly asked to be put in separate sectors so that we would have different sets of colleagues you know even mm-hmm. though it like overlaps but right for the most part you work the same job but in different areas <laughs> yeah yeah see and at my office it was like you work the same type of job like obviously they would never be in a situation where one person was the boss and the underling but mm. but like I just personally, I love the fact that my husband and I, we work two totally different jobs. And I think it may be just be my personal occupational hazard because I just, for the life of me, cannot see two therapists living and breathing in the same space and not analyzing each other all the time. I'm like, that would drive me crazy. Like I want to hear what's up. Do you ever like analyze him? Do, does he get bothered if you do it? Or is he like, so, oh, so good that you have this insight? <laughs> I, I think I've talked about this before, but it's it's a delicate balance because, you know, sometimes he'll ask me, he's like, okay, I want your opinion on this. Tell me what you think. And I'm like, all right, all right. You know, of course we have to maintain boundaries because I can't use my professional skills on someone that I know and love. Uh, yeah. Same thing with friends and things like that. You have to have those boundaries or it just gets muddy and ugly very quickly. Um, and it can be used to manipulate people and you really just don't want to fall into that. Um, but really most of the time I'm just like, okay, I'm going to tell you this is your wife. I'm not in therapist mode. Like I literally, when I get home from work, I have to like I get out of my work clothes. I go straight into my PJs so that I can mentally like get out of that space um, mm-hmm. so that I'm not doing those things with him. But yeah, there, there's there been a couple of times where I get that you're doing it again kind of thing. I'm like, okay, all right, I'll pull back. So we, <laughs> we have to have a lot of good communication in regards to that so that I'm not like being the overbearing therapist wife, but having two people like that in the same house, like, no, I'm yeah. sorry. It's just a bad idea. Some people make it work. I am not one of those people. Well, it's good you've already uh, found someone else then. <laughs> yes, he can tell me all day long about his engineering projects. I'm totally fine with mm-hmm. that. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Charles, Charles looks quite happy to see her. Like you can tell mm-hmm. he has a smile on his face. He's eager. Like it makes him happy to see her. Yeah. And he's like, I trust you rested well over the weekend. Yeah, I did. I spent most of it gaming online with my friends and we're like, Mm-hmm. I, was, I was like looking at his reaction to see if he's like 
you know, is he Diane? Does he do yeah. show any clue? <laughs> but he doesn't seem to, uh, he doesn't seem to indicate anything. But this, and sorry, just, he, I don't want to interrupt you again, but I just, I noticed this because she, this time she admitted to spending her time gaming, whereas mm -hmm. last time she was hiding it from him. So, you know, good True. communication. Here we come. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Be honest. Yeah. She did pause. You're right. She did pause before she said it, but she said it. Mm -hmm. And also he already knows, right? Because she, you know, she said, uh, you know, she said she was, you know, Mr. Reed and he was like, don't, you don't have to be embarrassed. So yeah. yeah so progress, right? So it's a mixed bag, right? Progress, retreat, whatever. And he, uh, he pets Bowser. He's like, were they understanding of your absence? They didn't really ask. Good. Are you ready to leave for work? Um, so, so, so that part, like, sorry, I, I'm just going to add on really quickly. So the yeah, part yeah, where yeah. he says good <laughs> after she says they didn't really ask, I'm like, that made me bristle a little bit. I was yeah. like, what, you don't want her friends to know about you? Like, I know he's very controlled right. and trying to keep things on the DL, right? But I'm just like, ooh, sorry. Like my, my inner, like healthy relationships therapist mind was like, ooh. I don't like that. Yeah. Charles. Like, does he plan on never letting anyone know? Does he plan on it being just sex and I'm leaving? Like, what's, what is he thinking? But like, I was wondering, not thinking? Thinking. Uh -huh. I was wondering how intentional the good is, you know, if it's like, right. actually like, oh, good. They didn't ask about me and you didn't uh -huh. have to tell them anything. Or was it just like, okay, good. You know, like, it's just this, like, oh, did they mind, you know, kind of more like uh -huh. Polite conversation. Yeah. Maybe? I mean, it's Where, entirely possible that I'm just reading too much into it, but I don't know, for some reason, like with and and I didn't really bristle at it until my second read through after I had already gone through yeah. the end of the episode. So maybe that's influencing it. It's also possible that he's saying good because he knows that Sam isn't ready to share. Like True. Sam is super shy. So maybe True. possibly he was thinking for her rather than him. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but yeah, I do wonder what his thoughts are like what does he plan uh, Sam doesn't know and he doesn't know I don't think either of them are really too planned out about the future you know mm -hmm. so. and it's like are you ready to leave for work we should have enough time for a stop, stop for a coffee if you'd like that would be great thanks and you know scratch be a good boy Bowser she's not really looking him in the eye she's blushing she's yeah hi <laughs> you know it's probably she's probably thinking about everything they did together and like not sure mm -hmm. if yeah, yeah. Well, and she put down Bowser, which was kind of her armor, to be able to look him in the eye. And now it's like, okay, my armor's gone. All right, now we got to go to work. Now I got to face the music. And she brushes her clothing and like doesn't look at him and says, "Sorry about my clothes, Charles. I know you don't like it when I dress frumpy for work." And she, you know, stammers, but I didn't have a lot of options. And. Charles looks up and tells her, you know, we have this full profile where she looks really cute. And mm -hmm. she says, I don't see any problem, Sam, but why do you not have many options? Is there a problem with your wardrobe? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, he's gosh. Like, I didn't have a lot of clothes to wear to cover the mark on my neck. Right. And, and she, is the mark still there yet? And he's like, show me. Which also I'm like, I would never, ever be with a guy who said something like that. Show me. No, 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 no. You say, please, can I see? You don't say, show me. <laughs> well, and, and like, part of me was like, okay, Charles, back the fuck up, man. Well, yeah. Like, she don't have to show you nothing. <laughs> like, I was a little like upset with him for saying that. And like, yeah, he was like very direct in this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think like you know, after, you know, going through the, the entire episode, it makes sense why he would say this, but, you know, at the same time, I'm like, dude, nah, nah, back it up a little bit because, you know, if, if she doesn't want to show you, she doesn't have to. Um, but the, but the next panel, Sam's like, oh my, <laughs> <laughs> like, are, are we getting frisky again? And I'm like, okay, all right, I'll cool my jets. <laughs> Oh, you're placating, placated by sexual innuendo, right? I, clearly, clearly. Because, like, because, like, oh, my God, the little skulls and the hearts in the background. I'm like... Dead, but she's excited at the same time. Like, yeah, yeah. And so, of course, Charles is like, I'm not trying to be provocative, Samara. <laughs> sure you are, dude. Sure you are somebody's having this flashback and i don't know if it's him or her i think it's yeah him. 
And he's like, I remember how hard I bit you and seeing the mark will allow me to better understand how quickly you heal because in the future, I'll know how hard to bite you. <laughs> yeah, it's so technical. I yes. was like, I didn't like this part at all. I was like, he's like, I used uh, number three bite strength or whatever. And <laughs> I'll have to use number two because like, like, dude, do you have like a jaw calculator? <laughs> like, well, in the throes of passion, you're not like, oh, I must bite her just a little bit less hard. Like, right, right. Well, and there's part of me that's like, is this his really awkward way of trying to flirt? Like I plan to do it again kind of thing. And I don't want to get too intense with you next time. I'm like, and, and granted, like, I know based on the interactions they had at his house, like there's more to it than just the sex piece. You know, like, I think yeah. both of them have feelings and they're both really restrained with knowing what to do with them. And so I do think he has plan, like, not like, written out plans or anything but i do think he wants to explore things with her a little bit um but i'm like dude okay <laughs> that's a very strange way to say it yeah, yeah. it's not romantic at all <laughs> I know. but you know i think that makes sense because he is just like as we see throughout this whole episode he just controls his emotions and he doesn't yeah. want to let that out so he's just like you said he's gonna be all technical about it and it is weird but <laughs> yeah it's that's just his very reserved Welsh way, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if the Welsh are known for their tact. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. You would probably know more than I would, Sharon. <laughs> I finally, by the way, after like weeks of saying that I would look up a Welsh accent, I finally did look up a Welsh accent. And I looked up some Welsh also, like the language. And I was like, okay, interesting. Um, so the Welsh people, when they talk like British, like English, they sounded British. Like I didn't see, I didn't hear like a, it wasn't like a Scottish accent or anything, but then they spoke Welsh and Welsh was like a whole different language. So mm -hmm. it was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so um, she's like, I'm sorry. He's like, why are you sorry? It isn't your fault that you bruise easily. I know, but I don't know. I don't know why she's embarrassed. She's just always apologizing for something she really doesn't need to apologize for. Yeah. Golly. It, like like I said, she's very much retreated back into her insecurities after this encounter. Yeah. So, and, and I think kind of like the harsh light of day, I have to go to work. We have to be seen together. And, you know, I, I don't want anyone to think any less of me. Because, I mean, anybody who's gone to work with a hickey, like, there's only so many ways you can cover the damn thing up. <laughs> yeah. So. I feel like, I feel like her embarrassment changed here though like initially yeah. when she was trying to cover it up I'm like it's new for her but it's also pretty normal you know like I've had it before where it's just like <laughs> you know have a hickey, yeah you're gonna hide it you know or like when it would be my first or whatever that I would be like embarrassed about it right right but I feel like the way he approached it and was like show me and you bruise easily and blah 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 you know yeah that made her feel almost like a guilty kind of embarrassment for having the hickey whereas before right. it was more of like a oh I did something I shouldn't have so I have a hickey and I was like oh like the person that was involved in this thing happening doesn't mm -hmm. seem happy that it happened like that it showed up on my skin you know yeah yeah because I mean in the next panel he's sweating bullets when she shows him like that's a guilty face Guilty? I, I was wondering because he looks away and he's like blushing I thought it was like he was sexually enticed and he was just like had to control himself I maybe maybe a little bit that but I think also you know he's he's in reserved Charles mode right he's in I must contain I must restrain and like I'm still thinking back to him having to spend half the day at the pool swimming laps because he feels like he's losing his control right and you know this is the evidence he can't refute it he can't ignore yeah. it it's there um and he asked to see it so i think it's a combination i i think like there's part of him that's secretly turned on by this and there's part of him that's like jesus i went too far yeah huh. well and he immediately like he's like he doesn't even talk about it like we should go change the like, subject yeah and Sam, you know, Sam kind of like pauses because she was expecting him, it seems, to say something or to continue mm -hmm. that topic, but he ain't ready. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. Oof. Oh boy. Then the friends come in. 
Is this my part? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. We switch scene and we're at the daily grind and we see Victoria and Ang Angela, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and well, Vicky looks the same as always, um, just like the let's play Brock. And then Angela is not looking very happy. And I didn't even, I didn't even immediately realize that this was uh, Dallas and Salt Lake. Yeah. <laughs> At first I just I went through, I was like, sure. <laughs> But yeah, it's Dallas um, mm -hmm. standing behind the counter and he's like, what? Oh, and then <laughs> hilarious. He's, he's such a shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's like, what, 15 or something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, okay. he's he's <laughs> typical, like, he has a bad boy image. That was like in my notes when we were going through this section. But uh, um, like, he has a bad boy image to uphold. <laughs> And yeah. I just think he latches on to that rather than, you know, being himself. I know there's a heart of gold in there somewhere. I'm sure there is. Let's be honest, <sighs> tough. He's in a tough, he's in a tough age for anybody. Yeah. And he lost his father. And so mm -hmm. mm, yeah. full sympathy for Dallas. He can be an asshole for a few years. <laughs> True. So, we'll give you yeah. a pass, bro. It's as okay. long as he grows out of it, you know, mm -hmm. there's still hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Angela is not <laughs> feeling kindly towards him. She says, did Dee think her score on whelp was too high and decided to butt a health risk? Oh, to put a health risk behind the counter? And he's What's like, the whelp? I'm not getting that. It's it's oh. like, um, like uh, Yelp? Yelp. Oh, okay. I get it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's the webtoon uh, version of the <laughs> brand name. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then we have this beautiful teenager. I was caught like doing crimes or whatever. <laughs> oh my god! Crimes. Yeah, so hard. It's pretty. By I'm the way, face with it. Yeah, crimes is. I mean, stealing toilet paper is pretty mild. So like, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like he he just made it sound worse than it was. But I think it's on purpose. Oh yeah. Like oh yeah. If I go to the skate park and my homies are there, they're like, "Why are you working at the coffee shop?" I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm doing crime." You know, like I wouldn't be like I was stealing toilet paper rolls to make like my mock up statue or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of it's kind of like not that I want to like dive into gang culture, but one of the things we see a lot with gang culture is they want to go to prison because it gives them street cred. So, you know, this is kind of his, like, I got to uphold my image and my street cred and I was doing crimes. So now I'm doing the time. <laughs> I guess. Oh gosh. Yeah. But you he's know, totally just... acting like he has any kind of control over yeah. the situation. He says, and Dee said she didn't want to get the cops involved. So I'm here to keep her quiet. <laughs> yeah, you sure you are, dude. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's effing bullshit. <laughs> oh, whatever. You know that d could like make that boy shut his mouth just with her words alone like yeah. she is mama bear she will she yeah, she no don't take anybody's shit <laughs> yeah yeah he so he's he's totally like this is all bravado this is teenage yeah. uh fussy bravado yeah um but apparently this is not a great solution <laughs> clearly <laughs> not <laughs> And he says, Dallas, come on. It's the morning rush. Get out of the way. He's like, I don't have anything to do. And then Link says, D asked you to empty the uh, trash upstairs. And then I think, yeah, I think that's Dallas then, right? On the right. He says, I already mm -hmm. took care of it. So Link says, then go sweep the patio. Just get out from behind the counter. Oh, God. So, yeah, this was maybe not helpful for, for D and D. Oh, I know. Uh, she says, yeah. She says, guys, please try to keep it together till after our um, rush hour. Well, we'll iron out things in a bit, okay? Oh, God. I felt so much for D in this moment. Like, I don't know if you ladies have ever managed people before, but like, oh, my God. When you have two people on a team that don't get along or they're getting persnickety with each other, it's the world's biggest cat fight ever. Yeah. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, you two, just do your job. <laughs> and I feel, I mean, I'm an older, I'm the oldest in my family. And I, I see like my bossiness in Link. And mm -hmm. it, it's like, ouch, like now that I'm a little bit like, I think more mature and understanding, I'm like, yeah. Link, you're running over Dallas. You're not letting, you're not respecting his autonomy. You're not respecting his personality. You're treating right. him like a baby, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah, but this is what older siblings do. And Link also has <clears> a lot of pressure and he feels responsible for him. He's, he is parentifying himself. Mm -hmm. And, but at the same time, you know, he's disrespecting Dallas. 
So <laughs> it's not so <Yeah>. great. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> Bless yeah, it. Everyone's struggling with this <laughs> setup. Um, I, I do appreciate the comic relief that it gives because we just got through a really tense scene. So it was very well placed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, oh, I love that this is included because like we were talking about how a lot of webtoons are like about romance and it's not so frequent to get sibling relationships, but sibling relationships yeah. are a huge part of our life. Mm -hmm. And I just love how this comic is just widespread. It has the parent relationship. It has the sibling relationship. It has friends and it's yeah. not just romance. It's wide, it's realistic and I love it. And really, mm -hmm. I think it's great. <laughs> yeah. And it's nice to have the side characters back. Like we didn't see them in a long time. Yeah. And this has some potential because, you know, this is, this is kind of Sam's found family, right? Yeah. This is, you know, like she's got her dad who's overbearing and controlling and like, just, just being a papa bear, right? Mom, who's like flying all over the world, doing her own thing. So like, this is, you know, this is her home base. This is where she's most comfortable. And I love that she took Charles here. <laughs> she's like yeah. testing the waters a little bit like yeah so she's she's not so so I guess like maybe I need to take back my my reservations from earlier about her like retreating a little bit because this is kind of risky taking him there right is it not maybe also the only coffee place that she knows or feels comfortable going into fair enough fair <clears> enough <throat> I don't know so yeah, she's she's not completely inexperienced like i'm sure she knows another at least one other coffee shop or she could ask charles to take them to one mm -hmm. but yeah i do i do agree i think maybe this was a way of like getting the people she trusts to meet right. him so she can get their opinion on him mm -hmm. Hmm. fair yeah well the first one to see them is d and she says oh hey sam and then sam says morning d everything all right yeah just some growing pains <laughs> <laughs> you don't say <laughs> This is my manager, Charles. And Charles, this is my friend, Dee. She owns this shop. A pleasure to meet you, Dee. Yeah, nice to meet you, too. <laughs> so much oh, just, like, polite conversation. Just very, like, <laughs> surface-level polite conversation. She introduces him as her manager. Like, yeah. not even on a personal level at all. Not at even a point. friend. Yeah. Yeah. So... And then basically they go through the order. What would you like to mm -hmm. order? The usual Sam. Yes, please. And for you, Charles, a regular coffee, please. And then <laughs> you've got her girlfriend butting in. Mm -hmm. And Angela says, morning, Sam. And she's like, oh, hey, you two. So from her, oh, hey, I mean, it sounds like maybe she wasn't sure they would be there, but. Right, right. Um, it seems like they mostly are when she's yeah. there, too. Yeah, well, and, and it's like, that's kind of their meetup spot. That's where they hang out and they they see each other. So, I mean, the, the likelihood is high. Um, yeah. But, oh, goodness. <laughs> this is the test, y'all. This is yeah. where it gets intense. <laughs> um, so, I didn't hear where my cutoff point is, so you guys oh. just let me know. Yeah, um, just continue until, like, Vicky may, meets Charles. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, Angela says, you were up really late last night running dungeons with that Dion guy. <clears throat> and Sam goes, yeah, he was a he? lot of fun. I know. I'm and still very have... curious about this man. Like, I want to know more. Like, he just happens to look like the dude from her dreams. Like, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. in a video game. They don't yeah. look like real people. Like, oh, okay, okay. Oh. Okay, you guys weren't on the podcast with him when, when we did that episode, right? No, I was, yeah, but it was the really rushed one. Yeah, we only had like 30 yeah. minutes to do it. Right, right, right. That's true. Yeah, that was one. Yeah. Okay. Well, so guys, so I guess, Patty, do you have opinions on who he is? <sighs> Part of me thinks like it could be Marshall. But then again, I think Marshall would be very like, hey, this is me. How's it going? I'm like, but I don't, I don't know. Like, this is just like a been. wrench in the spokes. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, maybe it's Ben. You it's might ben be right Marshall. about that. Yes, yes. But I think because we've seen the back and forth of him struggling between his martial law personality versus who he really is, mm -hmm. that maybe he would dial it back a little bit to be Ben in this instance, oh. which uh, might might feed the uh, the uh, the uh, um. God, what's the what's the ship name? 
help me out here for marshall and sam yeah, I think it's smash smash thank you smash. <laughs> can tell i was never a smasher but <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but uh no i i'm very curious about who it is and maybe it's somebody else altogether that just happens to look like the conglomeration of every single one of her love interests yeah, <laughs> yeah i think it might like it might help further Sam's journey, maybe, mm -hmm. even if it's not like a love interest or someone we already know. Right, right. Um, oh. But yeah, basically, she helped him with min maxing his class. I don't, know. I don't even know what that is. But All <laughs> night. <nice. laughs> I, I don't know what that means either. I'm not a gamer. I'm just going to assume that it's something really involved. And she was up all night with this new guy. So clearly, they have a lot in common. Yeah. <laughs> She's fluent in Shakespearean now. Um, <laughs> and, and then Angela says, who's this guy in suspenders? And uh, Sam says, his name is Charles and he's my manager. <clears throat> and I had not realized that she hadn't actually talked to them about Charles at all, like really. You yeah. Know? Like I yeah. thought they would know his name at least. Yeah, because she shared a lot with them about her experiences with Link when she was kind of going through those weird feelings for him. Um, but, you know, that was also happening during the time that she was getting to know Charles. And so I think he got overshadowed by the situation with Link because yeah. they know Link. They don't know Charles. Um, but yeah, this is this is where I think we start to broach that topic. <laughs> Yeah, and I think so. Angela says the only thing that they know about him so far, which is, isn't mm -hmm. he the guy who had you get his coffee for him? And Sam's so like, no, he didn't do that, Angela. But mm -hmm. of course, that's what she latches on to. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I told you, I bought him a coffee as a gift. He's made it clear I'm not supposed to wait on him. And then she says, I just don't want him to take advantage of you, Sam. Yeah, they're, they're very protective of her. Yes, yeah, they are. It's going to be so hard for her when she tells them about who he is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially, you know, and, and I try to take this with a grain of salt because Angela is obviously on the default of like men are pigs, scum of the earth, get <laughs> away from my friend, it, unless I know you personally. Cause like she, she didn't necessarily feel that about Link. And I think, you know, of course we know that Angela has her own feelings about Link. Um, but you know, it's just her kind of default mode is don't trust this guy. Who is he? What's his purpose? You, he, he had you get him coffee once. I already don't like him. <laughs> I think, honestly, even the suspenders kind of put him apart. She probably thinks suspenders yeah. are, I don't know, pretentious or something. Yeah. yeah. My husband actually just got suspenders and it's so perfect for him. Yeah. Yeah, he's funny. And, and I, I think it's... A related question. Why do oh, men's hands not stay up unless you have a belt or suspenders? Like, why don't you build it so it actually stays on? Like, why does it have they to don't have, have a, They don't have a booty. But they don't have hips either. Yeah, I don't understand. But my, my skirts are not all on my waist. My skirts are on my hip also. I don't get it. <laughs> but, but then, I mean. They're very I, straight. I think we just, yeah, I think we have like more. I mean, not all women, obviously, but more. I don't know. Just there's more shape there, you know? Like, even if mm -hmm. you're not like a curvaceous woman or whatever. Um, I think there's just more there. And like. There's just, I think for men, it's very hard to have like an actual booty. Like, I think you have to train for that, <laughs> in <a> way, <laughs> you know, to have an actual booty. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not much there for the pants to hang off of. So, and, yeah. and I think like it, it also, it becomes fashion too, because like the suspenders are, are now something that people look at as being professional and, and mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. Cause he's not wearing a suit jacket. Maybe it's summer and it's too, way too hot to be wearing a suit jacket. But um, I think it also like in this case, it serves to highlight the status difference and also reminding us of the age difference between Sam and Charles. Um, so I think that may also be another reason why Angela's bristling a little bit at him like mm. I don't know about this guy because I I truly wonder like if they had say met him the time that they went out to that pub just for dinner where he was very relaxed and casual wear his hair was just kind of messy and falling over his eyes and that 
oh god i love that um <laughs> bring messy charles back <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder if her her perception of him would have been different, you know, because that seems to be more relaxed. Like, obviously, this Charles is very well put together. It's very, you know, packaged, if you will. Um, so I th- and I think she just has a really like default position of suspicion yeah. with men. But unless you know that there's something more between Sam and Charles, mm-hmm. like he's kind of inconsequential, right? Like, True. Oh, it's my manager. We ran into each other in front of the coffee shop. So now we're both getting coffee. You know, it's just like, yeah, okay, whatever. He looks like a douche, but you know, like, why would she yeah. care, right? Beyond just being like, I don't want to know him. Mm-hmm. Well, they are very protective, like Mindy was saying. So maybe yeah. it's just like, who are you? What are your intentions towards my my friend? <laughs> oh God. Well, do you want to take over here, Patty? Yeah, I can take over here. Yeah. So this is the part where Vicky, and this is, this is where we're reminded of her ability. Um, she says, hi, Charles, it's nice to meet you. And she waves and then she shakes his hand like you would in social settings. And, uh, she has this really like sharp reaction to his aura. Um, and then we get flashbacks to when Charles was, you know, discovering his wife presumably cheating on him um i don't i don't think the vicky actually sees what's going on here because that would be really weird but i think maybe she's getting like the vibes and the feeling from it so we go that's that's because like there's no way she could be getting these specific scenes unless this goes into the realm of fantasy which let's play right like a fantasy right we kind of a late stage to introduce it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like to properly introduce it you know like is vicky a magical witch who can just understand all the things but yeah i think i think you know going back to it and what we've been talking about i think she's just highly empathic and she gets vibes from people and charles has a lot of weird vibes right um so you know he's giving off this like insecure vibe first of all because we're paneling through all of this stuff with his ex-wife gwen um and clearly it's distressing to to vicky like it's not it's not something she feels good about um and she experienced that with marshall so you know i at first i was like ah you know this could be just like it's hard to feel negative emotions right they're hard to to get that feeling off of you you know and then we skip to the the um scenes where Charles and Sam are getting it down (laughs) and uh but she sees it from a very different light I think like they're experiencing it from a different light um maybe this feels uh a little bit predatory to Vicky but if she's seeing it from his point of view right Mm -hmm. I mean would he think of himself that he's predatory or would he maybe just like if it's a negative emotion would it just be like this loss of control yeah which i also i forgot that these two panels were in there so when we're just Mm -hmm. saying like oh is it magic or not or whatever i don't know like what is she actually feeling does she now know that they hooked up just from shaking his hand i don't know but (sighs) I mean, okay, so what, what could be is mm-hmm. sometimes when you see two people together, if you're good friends with them, sometimes you could tell, like, just by the, how they look at each other, you could tell they, like, have a thing going on. So yeah. that could be, like, within the realm of reason. And I think that, I don't know if it really comes from shaking the hand, but let's just, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But you see that she now, so I, I was also curious, I don't know how she reacts. I think what, what she does now is she lifts her eyes up and she opens her eyes for a Vicky level, right? Mm-hmm. And she, I think that she does that to... <laughs> to to kind of like evaluate him and see like yeah. hey wait I think he has a thing going on with my friend like what are his, like you said what are his intentions what's he like what is he what right, is he, right. his purpose and she then she gasps and you can continue yeah and so she gasps and then we look up and this whole panel this it's just extremely ominous there's a bunch of the um, like I don't know the way to like put it but like the personified emotions. What's up? She calls it emoticons. 
emoticons. So the emoticons are all chained up. There's many, many, many of them. Um, and it says the word bound as she's this, sensing this. This, this is this. Not the good kind. Yeah, yeah. This this was bad because I'm like, okay, what are we trying to say with this panel? Like we we all know that Charles is very controlled, very um like trying to stay put together, but he has a lot of demons in his closet. I think it's showing, it's showing that all of his emotions are locked down, that he doesn't, mm -hmm. and they also all have the suspenders, you know, chains as well. So it's mimicking him. Ah. Oh my God, I didn't even pick up on that. Yeah, I think wow. that he's just, he's, he's become like, ever since that incident, he locked down everything. So lock like, it up, yeah. All of his emotions, not just like the sexuality and the friendship, but like everything. Yes. yeah and and when i saw this panel like i'm not gonna lie like i was like holy shit this goes deeper than we ever thought because yeah. sure of course he would have you know tightened emotions because of what happened to him and he's trying to control himself the best way he he knows how but this is like this is what i would call a cesspool of festering emotions that are being held back this is yeah. This makes me worried for Sam. And the reason I say this, because um, as we go as we go through these next panels, we move along. Clearly, this is extremely distressing to Vicky, you know, and she flinches as she's holding his hand. And then we see one of the chains coil around Charles's arm, and it approaches Vicky like a snake. Like, I literally got, like, a very, like, snake-like image, and she yanks her hand back yeah, in fear. And the first thing that came to my mind when I read this, you know, it's the reason why I think this goes so much deeper than just him controlling his emotions. Uh, there was a, something that one of my friends had posted on Facebook, and it was a quote that says, if someone is afraid of hurting you, it's not empathy, it's a warning. And we've known that this whole time that Charles is, he's trying very hard to, to be mindful of Sam and to, to keep his, himself in check, but it, he knows he has the potential to hurt her. He knows he has the potential to, um, to do things wrong. And I think he's very, very afraid of that. And to me, that's that's a big warning sign. And I think that's what Vicky is seeing here. That's kind of how I read it. What do you ladies think? I Yeah, I think it's really interesting because I feel like so far in the dis discourse around uh, Charles, mm -hmm. you know, we've kind of been viewing him as a victim of his past. And, you yeah. know, as this being a co coping me mechanism, um, mm -hmm. like a protection for himself but now especially with the coil it feels very predatory like mm -hmm. might be you know it might be subconscious but it's this like it doesn't stop at his own person the control right, right? he he's and this is what we already said earlier in the in the episode as well like he's unwittingly starting to control the people around him like sam mm -hmm. Um, he does it to what Diana, his uh, previous. Oh yeah, his previous uh, person. Yeah, rendezvous. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there, if you look at it now, after having seen these panels, the way that he kind of disregards her needs and only looks at what he wants from her and when he wants that, and then if she, you know, doesn't do what they agreed it's an issue but then mm -hmm. he just kind of discards her but then it's like yeah she'll come back anyway like it's it is very charles centric with not yeah. that much regard for another person and then for me this view of seeing his emotions not just bound but also mm -hmm. bowing to him you know they're not even struggling right they're incredibly submissive to him and mm -hmm. he almost looks like an overlord like to me well, when I, when I yeah. reach these panels, like, 
they really like did something to me I was like oh my mm-hmm. god this is it's creepy you know it's almost like like something thrillery <laughs> I don't know um so I completely agree with you I got so worried for Oof. Sam because it you know we, we saw I think wasn't it uh, I don't know if it was last episode or the one before uh there was the pool episode where we saw the last heart almost completely melted right yeah but then when you see this that doesn't look like he's completely melted you know this looks yeah. like everything is still in order which makes me wonder well, what really... did he do during his day like after that whole pool tighten scene to cool off like he tightened it back yeah. up again oh gosh and and this has kind of showed me with the the coil of of the snake like chain is that you know because i exert so much control over myself and everything around me i pull people into my orbit and i take them down with me yeah and i do agree with you she ran it i don't think it's necessarily intentional but if somebody doesn't solve their own issues that's what's going to happen mm-hmm. and it reminds me i have a one of my husband's friends grew up in like the most ridiculously traumatic abusive household like mm-hmm. just like the worst stories you could possibly hear like i can't even repeat it because it's like horrible but he grew up he married someone and he tried very hard to like be better and he was a million times better than what he grew up on but because he never fully and i don't know if it's ever possible honestly to fully solve something like that really but because he had never done enough work on it like he <laughs> he did that he was like destructive to everyone around him mm-hmm. well not everyone but he was destructive to like his wife for sure even with all the like how much better he had become you know from from his past and like if you're so damaged you do that to people around you so yeah you, you tend to bleed on what you don't heal mm-hmm. You bleed all over people. Uh, nervous. <sighs> yeah. The this this is like I feel like this was a reality check for us yeah. because we just got through some very fluffy and delicious Charles and Sam time. And I think this is Mongi's way of saying, now hold the phone. He's still got a lot of shit he's got to work through. And maybe he's not ready for Sam yet, like emotionally. Because if you're yeah. that contained and that closed off emotionally, you can't really give yourself to another person emotionally. I don't think he's capable of that right now. He's trying. There's parts where it kind of like, like with the melted heart, it kind of bleeds through and he shows it and then he rins it back in out of fear. Completely out of fear. He is completely motivated by fear. And that's what's so interesting is that I think Sam is motivated by wanting to kind of step out of her shell, out of her own controlled nature. And I don't know if emotionally she's going to continue to grow with Charles, especially seeing this, but whew, so I'm, I'm on it, right? Because he's trying to train yeah. her out of her fear, right? She has like right. fear and he has emotional fear, right? Fear of getting too close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so in a way, like, you know, he's the teacher, but he needs mm-hmm. some teaching himself. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. Well, because think about it. It's 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 a classic um, situation that I see in therapy all the time. People who have these codependent tendencies of I will mentor and nurture other people, but I'm not going to work on myself because it's so much easier to deal with someone else's issues because you can go home at the end of the day, but you can't yeah. go home from your own issues. So I just, hmm. maybe that's why his house is so goddamn big because he has to run away from himself. Oh my God. (laughs) Uh, You know, who, who knows, man, (laughs) I I'm, I'm very interested to see where we go with this. And, and again, like, does this make me extremely worried for Sam and Charles? Yes. Um, Do I think that he means to be, bad for her no i th- i think he genuinely does care about her he just doesn't know how to do that um and that may be their downfall as a ship yeah. i'll be real either their downfall or they'll have to go through some massive growth thing which is also mm-hmm. a message that i think is fantastic because yes. I, I really do think it's important for people to know that even if you've been damaged there's hope for you, you right know? for of sure <clears throat> for sure of course but i think again it just begs the question like are 
they the people for each other Mm -hmm. with which that growth will happen you know individually as well yeah and I have to say like before you know yeah I was like oh yeah Charles needs to you know work on himself he needs to fall whatever Mm -hmm. um but now like seeing these panels because Mongi made a choice of how to display it right right it didn't have to be this (laughs) intense and scary in a way Mm -hmm. like at least to me I don't know maybe I'm easily scared but like this I was no I got creeped out too images yeah Mm -hmm. and they made me think like you know I was like seeing them on a date where you would like shout at the girl and be like get the angel shot like get the angel shot you know get out Mm -hmm. of there leave um so I'm really curious if we're going to continue down this path of like intensifying Charles's Mm -hmm. issues and his potential threat to like Sam's self-confidence or you know yeah just her personality I guess Mm -hmm. or if you know we're gonna let this rest for a little bit and then be reminded of like the good moments between them and have this kind of lingering underneath right and this is this is definitely not shaping up to be good for either one of them because if both your best friends have a bad impression of your love interest it's usually pretty foreboding Um, I think there's something that's been said that like not a good number of the time your friends are the ones who can accurately determine whether or not the relationship will work out. And so this has me worried. I don't think we got an actual opinion from Angela. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't think that what she said can really count for anything yet, but yeah, Mm -hmm. Vicky is, I'm curious if we'll get more of Vicky's thoughts later. Like what will she Will she try to find out more about Charles herself? Will she try to probe Sam about Charles? Oh, I think so. Does she think stay away? Does she think send him to therapy? Like, is she going to try to talk to him? I don't think she'll do that. But like, well, you know, what's going to be the yeah. next? Yeah. And, and like, clearly what's interesting is like after Vicky yanks her hand away, um, they see that she's distressed. Everyone is kind yeah. of like, whoa, what the hell just happened? Like, Vicky, are you okay? Sam says. And you know, Angela's wigged out too. She's like, whoa. Um, and Vicky's just trying to like play it off. She's like, yeah, it was just a, a muscle spasm. I guess I'm low on potassium. Yeah. Face is like, yeah so I think, I, th- I think that, I don't think Vicky is the kind of person to ignore it. I think that she just needs, no. to, she's not going to act on it right away. Like she needs to right. think about it. Sure. But but then then the right Charles, moment to bring it up. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of an awkward moment to break it up. <laughs> Like, hey, you just gave me some really weird fucking vibes. Get away from my friend, dude. <laughs> she's also more thoughtful, thoughtful than that, you know? True, she's, I true. I think she's compassionate as well. Like, she she understands, okay, Charles is a person too. And mm-hmm. I think she, I don't think she would be like, oh, stay away necessarily. I think she would be like, you know. Oh, her. I wasn't saying that she would actually do that. I'm just saying that, like, that... It, it's not something that would happen. She's not, she's not the type to do that. Now, Angela would be the type right. to do that. Yeah. Punch him. <laughs> like, yeah. uh-uh. Um, and you know what's and, Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was just going to analyze Charles's expression in the next one because he right. doesn't seem aware of the effect that he had on her. He doesn't get it. He's like, no, he doesn't. Skeptical. And he's like, what happened? But he doesn't understand how strongly he's radiating those vibes. Oh, Which that's is, so interesting. So, uh, he's not aware. Like he's very- yeah. I read it the oh, exact God. opposite way. Really? really? Okay. Yeah. I was like, like, he looks so skeptical, you know, like to me, it wasn't like, cause okay. If I were to draw this, <laughs> mm-hmm. if I wanted to show him being like, you know, like surprised or whatever, or confused by her reaction, I would have had both eyebrows up and been like, you know, like, oh, like, what? But this is like a, like a, you know, I don't know. It looks calculated and it looks mm-hmm. like, it looks like, oh, somebody's on to me. I don't know. But then I'm like, oh, th- but does he know what it looks like behind him? Does he know of this like slave army of emotions? Oh, wow. You know? And this again begs the question, how much of these like visual things we're getting mm-hmm. are meant to be taken at face value you know hey, i don't know i don't I know either. i see your <laughs> point he does look he does 
I could see it. I could see that there's some self. I don't know. I don't know. I could see it both ways. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait. Yeah. Now that mm-hmm. now that you said like, oh, he doesn't know like the effect he has. And I'm like, oh, because this is why the podcast is so great because I read it one mm-hmm. way and I was like, oh, he looks fucking threatening there. And then you're like, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> maybe he doesn't. <laughs> Well, and I mean, if we, if we think about it in the context of he, he tries to be contained and controlled in all public situations, um, it would be, I think it would be a little bit incongruent for him to be like, whoa, oh, what's wrong? You know, cause I, I don't think he, he no, still yeah. has a lack of self-awareness when it comes to his emotions. So I think, you know, his inability to empathize and read the other person's expression, I think you know, he's just like, oh, okay, this is kind of weird and awkward. Like, but that's, that's like a Charles controlled expression. So I don't know. I keep going back and forth. Well, oh. that's good, right? I, this is yeah. Great that we, it's, I, I, do, I think, yeah, they could, they're like 50, 50. Yeah. I think we're going to have to see inside his thoughts before we can really come to a conclusion on this one. Yeah. I mean, because that, that eyebrow cock, that's that's the only thing we've gotten out of him in this interaction. Just a very like, yeah. whoop, that's it. Yeah, um, I, yeah, yeah I have so downstairs uh, Paul Ekman's book, uh, Emotions Revealed, which is all about analyzing people's faces. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, let's go get it and flip through the pages. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, do which that? eyebrows raised? How high is it raised? <laughs> And well, and and this kind of reminds me of the times in Midnight Poppy Land when Taurus face is unreadable. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is very much a, a Charles unreadable face. Yeah. And all we get is just the single eyebrow reaction. Like he's yeah. got a thin lipped line. He's he's not like overly affected, but I wonder how much he's containing here. Yeah, I don't but know, it's guys. so true because it's always like men and popular as well. It's so expressive and there's mm-hmm. like the subtlest changes of the facial features change the right. expression. But so often you still don't know what that expression means. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, are they shocked? Are they like positively surprised? You know, yeah. I remember when I was on the podcast for Midnight Poppy Land, um, some of us were like, yeah, Poppy looks scared in this moment. And then somebody else, and or I don't know if it was in a comment online, was like, oh my God, like Poppy is turned on by this. And I was like, <laughs> how are you getting that out of the same facial expression? <laughs> well, I, th- I mean, personally, I think that's just people kind of projecting their own read onto it, like yeah. Yeah. how they would view that behavior. But <laughs> that's, that's a podcast for another day. Yeah. But Mindy, you still said you had questions about Vicky, or did you already ask them now? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that was the question. Is like, is it magic or is it okay. perception or vibes or whatever? But if you guys want to do a bonus question, um, I'd be I'd be pleased if we could do that. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure, I'm down. Okay, awesome.